I know you said it's hypocritical for people to criticize uh, the uh, Attorney General, Acting Attorney General Whitaker for this uh, whole situation because he's been mentioned as a possible witness in Robert Mueller's probe. But I wanted to also talk to you about this question of a Senate confirmation. And I want to read to you a statement from John Wu, the Berkeley Law professor and lawyer to President Bush. He was talking to Axios, and here's the quote. The Constitution says that principal officers must go through appointment with the advice and consent of the Senate. And Morrison v. Olson, the Supreme Court made it clear that the Attorney General is a principal officer. Therefore, Whitaker cannot serve as acting Attorney General despite the Vacancies Act, which does provide for him to be an acting AG. The statute is unconstitutional when it is applied in that way. What do you say to that argument that it's unconstitutional to have Whitaker as acting Attorney General? I think it's wrong. I think if he were the acting attorney general for months at a time, it would be a very, very strong argument. But the Constitution does not compel the president to appoint a new attorney general on the day his previous attorney general resigns or retires. Uh, plainly common sense contemplates that there has to be a hiatus. From the news reports, the president is actively trying to select the permanent attorney general. I've seen three or four names put forward. And the president surely has some, some leeway in terms of days at least before he appoints. And what if the Senate doesn't confirm uh, or holds it up? Uh, then you have the acting attorney general acting for a period of time. Constitution has to be construed in a common sense way. And I strongly believe that uh, if the shoe were on the other foot here, if this were a democratic uh, president making an interim appointment or a temporary appointment, uh, many of the same uh, commentators would not be making this constitutional argument. Perhaps some would, but uh, I think that common sense requires that you give the president a little bit of leeway. Obviously, if this goes to weeks or months, then the constitutional argument becomes a stronger one. What if something consequential does happen with the Mueller investigation and he has delivered that report and he then is forced to act upon it? Does that change the circumstances at all? I don't think it's going to happen. I think that he would defer first to Rosenstein, who himself has a real problem in terms of whether he should be recused or he would wait until the uh, attorney general was confirmed by the Senate. I think it would be wrong for an acting attorney general to make uh, permanent, irreversible decisions. All right. Now, there's also this other issue that's been raised. Whitaker apparently worked for a company that was shut down by the Federal Trade Commission. And there are also reports that a federal court in Florida ordered that same company to pay a $25 million fine and shut its doors. Should we be concerned that the acting attorney general was tied to a company with these kinds of issues? Well, the concern is that uh, this won't be explored by the Senate because um, since it's an acting appointment, there's no confirmation process. And so one reason we have a confirmation process is to look at issues, look at the qualifications, and there are serious questions about Whitaker's qualifications. That's why I think the president would be wise to appoint a permanent uh, attorney general as soon as possible. All right, as soon as possible. All right, Alan, let's switch to the recount issue. We have potential recounts, actually recounts happening in Arizona, maybe one in Georgia and going on in Florida. Earlier today, Florida Senator Bill Nelson talked about the issue of the recounts. Here is Senator Nelson. No one should stand in the way of the people of our state exercising their right to vote and to have their voice heard. Clearly, Rick Scott is trying to stop all the votes from being counted and he's impeding the democratic process. Meanwhile, Governor Scott has accused Democrats of trying to steal the election. He's also filed lawsuits and ordered the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to investigate. What do you think here, Professor? Is this actually an attempt to steal the election or really just a case of rank incompetence when it comes to the supervisors of election in Palm Beach and Broward County? Well, Broward County is well known for its corruption. Uh, it, it, among Florida counties, it is among uh, the least trusted and the most corrupt. And so um, one has to worry very much about, about Broward County, not so much Palm Beach County, um, but um, every vote should be counted. Uh, nobody should be declared to be the senator or the governor or anything else until every vote is counted, no matter how long it takes. I don't think we want to see uh, a revisiting of Bush versus Gore where they stop the counting of the vote and people even almost 20 years later are still very dissatisfied. Every vote should be counted and an objective neutral process should be put in place to make sure that every ballot is given complete and equal weight. 
Now, this obviously is a hyper-partisan issue. What do you think about the prospect that this might turn some people off and actually force some people to question the legitimacy of our democratic process? I think quite the opposite. I think the fact that we have in place recount laws and recount procedures should enhance uh, in the minds of people the democratic nature. Look, it, democracy is never perfect, but uh, in our country mostly, uh, it works very, very effectively. I mean, it's not like in the Soviet Union, uh, the, the former Soviet Union, even today's Russia, where people are elected with 99% of the vote. Um, you know, we know that the people's ballots are generally counted, and we also know that uh, every year, every time there's an election, there are some problems like this. Florida seems to specialize in them, but they also seem to have uh, remedies at hand that can allow every vote to be counted. So, no, I don't think people should lose faith in democracy. All right, we sometimes do forget how good we do have it here in this country. Professor Alan Dershowitz, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.